Thank you for joining in. You are watching the End Time Revival. Today, we are looking at the story of William Tyndale. William Tyndale was born near the Welsh border of England in 1494. He lived at a time where it was illegal to have the Bible in English. Men and women were even burned for teaching their children the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, and Ten Commandments in English. In 1508, Parliament passed the Constitutions of Oxford, which forbade anyone from translating or reading a part of the Bible in the language of the people. William Tyndale, however, was not discouraged by this, but was much determined for making available to every Englishman, even if it meant the cost of losing his life. Tyndale studied at Oxford and Cambridge. Tyndale was oftentimes invited to the table of Sir John Walsh. And Tyndale challenged and confronted the priests with the biblical ignorance. At one point, he said to them, If God spares my life, many years to come, I will cause a boy that driveth the plough to know more of the scriptures than thou dost. He later went to London to ask Bishop Tunstall if he could be authorized to make an English translation of the Bible, but the bishop would not grant him approval. Even at this Tyndale did not give up on his dream. When the British merchants saw the level of determination of Tyndale they encouraged him. He left for Europe to complete his translation of the Bible, then have it printed and smuggled back into England. Even in Germany he smuggled some of Martin Luther's writings from Germany into England. In 1524, Tyndale sailed also for Germany, in Hamburg and in Cologne where he found a printer for his English translation and he did print his work but news got out of the work Tyndale was on and the press house was raided. Tyndale then escaped to the German city Worms with some pages he printed. And there he published his New Testament, where 6,000 copies were printed and smuggled into England. The leaders who were against this English translation, some bought copies just so destroy and burn them but Tyndale was not discouraged, he used the money he got from the copies he printed to print even more improved editions. King Henry being aware of the efforts of Tyndale, he offered him a safe passage to England to serve as his writer and scholar. But Tyndale refused, making it clear that he would not return until the Bible could be legally translated into English. Tyndale continued hiding among the merchants in Antwerp and even begun translating the Old Testament while the king's agents searched very diligently for him all over England and Europe and couldn't find him. In 1525 his New Testament was printed and smuggled into England. It was the first translation of the Bible from original Greek into English, thus that made him the first person to turn Bible into English translation. In 1535, he was betrayed by someone close to him, being caught, he was arrested by imperial forces, thrown into prison, brought also to trial for heresy, believing that forgiveness in the scriptures is enough for salvation, and believing that faith alone can justify a person in God. He was hereby found guilty and condemned. In 6 of October, 1536, he bound to a pole in the open space, where a large crowd was there watching, strangled till death and his body was burned there while the large crowd watched. His last prayer while being executed was, Lord, open the King of England's eyes. Indeed this man of God wanted nothing except to see the knowledge of God's word be made known. The Bible we take for granted today, 
Somebody died just so it would be printed also to English. Indeed, William Tyndale died the death of a faithful martyr. Glory be to God.